Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players in Nicaragua build their starting rosters and to learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on this episode, we will discuss building your very first starting roster with 1,000 credits for your Nicaragua Ash Waste campaign using Ash Waste Nomads. Now, the Ash Waste Nomads were actually one of the first gangs that I originally started off with the Nicaragua Ash Waste starter box. And uh, in that starter box, they originally did not have any rules about how to build a gang from scratch. However, with the latest release of Nicaragua Book of the Outlands, they actually have a lot of rules about how to begin your Ash Waste Nomad gang. So because of what we're going to do in this video, we're going to talk about the gang's strengths and weaknesses. We'll talk about their individual fighters, as well as their hanger-ons, brutes, and exotic beasts that they have. We'll also give you three sample lists that you guys could use to start off your games of uh, Nicaragua Ash Waste campaigns. And then, of course, give our overall conclusion about this gang. So that being said, let's get this video on a roll. So the first thing we're going to talk about when it comes to the Ash Waste Nomad Gangs is their strengths. So let's go ahead and talk about that real quick. So first of all, pretty much all members of this gang actually start off with two pieces of equipment. Everyone definitely has Ash Cloaks. What that does, that actually gives you automatic respirators for the entirety of your gang. So toxin weapons and gas weapons would be very difficult to wound your characters uh, because they have off the bat. Not to mention, the battlefield conditions can also be quite hazardous on a Ash Waste campaign. So this will actually help you survive some of those environmental effects as well because if any of your nomads actually take a wound, you automatically get a five up save against those. So that's really good to help you out because some of those battlefield conditions can be quite treacherous. Now, another piece of equipment that most of your gang members actually have are what's known as sky mantles. Sky mantles are those flags that hang off the back of the ash waste nomads. And what this is for is for your fighters who are on foot only. And what it ends up happening is that you can actually take a double action using your sky mantle, which case you have the hidden condition on you, even though it's not pitch back conditions or what the case may be. This is really good to really help you out, especially when you look at the way that you're supposed to play Ash Waste Nomads, which is to use like a very stealthy kind of ninja approach with their gang. So using that hidden condition is going to help you to sneak up upon your opponents, close the distance without being shot, so that way you can engage your enemies and launch surprise attacks against them. At the same time, they also have the new blast weapons available for their rosters as well. And their blast weapons are actually quite powerful because all their blast weapons come with shock traits which can make it easier to take your opponents out of action as well at the same time their close combat weapons are also quite helpful as well as their chain lances their mono hooks their long blades uh, their stalking knives are all actually very powerful close combat weapons and so that would really definitely help you out especially if you engage in close quarters combat with your enemy as well. Another huge strength that they also have as well is that their warriors, which are basically their gang to level characters, can take long rifles. So not only can the dustback Helamites take them, which are the guys running the insects, but so can most of their uh, warriors as well. Which is going to really help you keep uh, your enemies at bay because you'll be able to engage them at longer distances as well. So if you can imagine, you can use that combination of hidden so that way your enemies close in closer to you and then you can start popping at your enemies with long range using those long rifles, which is really nice as well. Not to mention the Dustback Helamite, which is the insect that they ride, is also very quick as well. It gives them 8 inch movement, it also gives them mighty leap ability, and that could really help you out as well. So now that we're done talking about the strengths, let's talk about the weaknesses of an Ash Waste Nomad Gang. First of all, they actually have pretty high point values for the fighters as well as the weapons that this gang uses as well. Which means your Ash Waste Nomad Gangs are actually not going to be very large as well. They're actually going to be very, quite small uh, as opposed to a lot of starting gangs. So because of that, think of your Ash Waste Gang as less of a gang, but more like a crack unit of stealthy special forces operators is how I would pretty much do it. Um, the reason why is because they use a lot of stealth in order to achieve their objectives. And, um, and of course, if they get outnumbered very quickly, if they're not careful, uh, it could fall apart real quick for them as well. Another weakness that they have is that a lot of their ranged weapons and their close combat weapons, while they're very strong against other infantry, against other people, against uh, your enemy fighters, um, against high toughness vehicle, it's going to be a huge problem. Okay, so the Ash Waste Nomads don't have any, like, vehicle killing weaponry in their arsenals. So they don't have las cannons, for example. Uh, they don't have melted guns, uh, uh, plasma weapons, that kind of thing. So going against high toughness vehicles is going to be kind of difficult for these guys. Um, you will need to uh, basically make smart and uh, careful 
purchases from the trading post as well as the black market as the campaign develops in order to solve this problem as well. Another huge problem is that they have no access to grenades of any sort from the start of their rosters. So if you want to get grenades for your characters, uh, you'll have to do it from the trading post as well as from the black market as well, which could be a huge problem for these guys. Another weakness these guys have, of course, is that they cannot take any alliances of any sort and they're automatically outlaws as well for obvious reasons. So because of that, they can't do that. But probably the biggest weakness that these guys have is the lack of vehicles. Ashways nomads cannot take vehicles of any sort and that's going to cause you a lot of problems because a lot of gangs going to the ashways have 400 credits to spend on vehicles and they can put some pretty powerful weapons on those vehicles as well and as an ashways nomad you don't have anything as of yet to help you out with that um i imagine this problem is probably going to be solved with future supplements in the future like i can imagine like larger insects uh being used by the ashways nomads that are kind of meet the medium uh, large, uh, heavy uh, type vehicle classes. I, I imagine that would happen. And if they don't, uh, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have problems. And we're gonna talk about some of the ways you can kind of solve those problems here in a little bit. So now that we're done talking about the strengths and weaknesses of using an Ashways Nomad Gang, let's go ahead and talk about the individual fighters. All right, so up first, we're going to talk about your leader, which is the Ash Waste Nomad Chieftain. So let's talk about these characters real quick. So they're worth 120 credits apiece. Their stats are movement 6, so they're very, very quick. They have 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill, 3 strength and toughness, 2 wounds, 3 initiative, 2 attacks. They also have 5 leadership, 5 cool, 6 willpower, and 6 intelligence. So when it comes to their skills access, uh, they can use cunning, leadership, and savant as their primary skills, with agility, combat, as well as wasteland skills being their secondaries on this one. Now, when it comes to the Ashways Chieftain, uh, they're actually got pretty decent stats, all things considered. Um, yeah, they, they're very, very quick with six inches. They got a three-up initiative, so these guys are really good at moving around the battlefield as well. And they're actually pretty good at both range as well as close combat. Now, they do have the one-up on close combat, but you really don't want to risk your leader too much if you don't have to. Uh, you might want to keep them more like a distance for your enemy, uh, for, to keep them away from your enemies. Now, when it comes to your Ashways Nomad Chieftain, the way I would use this guy is useful as a support character with either leadership skills, so getting off buffs for your uh, for your members of your gangs or doing group activations or using the Overseer skill, for example, or using their Savant skill to help people out. I can imagine using Munitioneer as a pretty good um, indicator to help out with that, so that way you can you know reroll those ammo rolls for the members of your team because you pretty much have four up ammo rolls for most of the weapons in an Ashways Nomad gang, so that's going to really help you out as well. Now, unfortunately, the Ashways Nomad Chieftain cannot ride a Dustback Helamite or any kind of vehicle or any kind of mount as of yet, at least not officially anyways. And like I said before, hopefully future supplements will solve this problem, but if not, I do have a pretty, I think, fair way of doing it unofficially. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later when we get to the actual list building uh, for the gangs. So let's go and talk about your champions. Now we're gonna talk about the Ash Waste Nomad Watcher. This is one of your first champions. Uh, this fighter costs you 100 credits. And this is what their stats are. So we have five inch movement, four weapon skill, three plus ballistic skill, three strength and toughness, two wounds, three plus initiative, two attacks. They have six leadership, six cool, seven willpower as well as seven intelligence. And when it comes to their skills, they have shooting as well as the wasteland skills as their two primaries with cunning as well as leadership and savant as their secondaries. So because of that, those are the stats that you're looking at when it comes to your guys as nomad watchers which are your champions now when it comes to your guys as uh, watchers they're mainly your heavy shooters and the reason why is because they do have that one up on their ballista skills so have a three ballista skills so you want to put heavy weapons on these guys as well my suggestion to you is right off the bat purchase a suspenser for these guys uh, because uh, be able to firing an unwieldy heavy weapon is a double action so it's gonna be very very difficult for your ash waste nomads to be able to move around and shoot the suspenser solves that problem by making a basic action and they can still move and shoot with their weapons so i suggest you pair up with them because a ash waste nomad gang relies heavily upon movement and that's one of the things i would actually you know have you focus on at the same time, they have access to shooting as well as wasteland skills as their primaries, but to be perfectly honest, shooting is probably going to be the one you want to use uh, because you want to use those heavy weapons that these guys are able to carry, especially if you pair it with fast shot. Being able to shoot twice with a heavy weapon is going to be invaluable, so that's going to really help you out as well. And just like when it comes to the Ash Waste Nomad Chieftain, uh, they can't ride Deathback Helamites or any mounts of any sort right now at least not officially anyways. And like I said before, we'll talk about how you can kind of solve some of these problems later on when the time comes. So these are your long range killers. You want to give them some heavy weapons and make them do all the damage uh, for, your, for your gang. 
Your second type of champion is called the Ash Waste Nomad Stormcaller. This is your second champion type. It costs 120 credits uh, to fill this fighter. Let's talk about their stats real quick. They have a stat of 5 inch movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill, 3 strength and 3 toughness, 2 wounds, 3 initiative, 2 attacks, 8 plus leadership, 6 plus cool, 6 plus willpower, as well as 7 plus intelligence. So let's go and talk about these guys. So first of all, uh, these guys are not psychers. So if you're worried, about, if you're wondering if you could be able to put psychic abilities on these guys, uh, that is not the case. Their ability to manipulate battlefield conditions which is basically called a uh, change weather which is a double action for them um, they have to use uh, it's actually archaeo tech that actually allows them to do so it's not exactly like uh, they have psychic abilities so they don't have any psychic powers so that part is kind of sad so I do apologize for that part if you're hoping to give this guy psychic abilities uh, that's not gonna happen but with that being said, the Stormcaller is perfect for manipulating battlefield conditions because battlefield conditions play a huge role in Ash Waste campaigns, especially with the individual scenarios. So be able to manipulate those battlefield conditions with their change weather abilities is going to be really, really helpful at that part. At the same time, these guys are slightly better at close combat, but as weird as it may sound, you don't really want to send them into combat too much. You want to use this champion as support. They're there to change battlefield conditions. Use either the Savant or the Wasteland skills as their primaries because they're two primaries. Their uh, secondaries are combat, cunning, as well as leader and leadership. But Savant or Wasteland skills will probably be your primary. More often than not, probably the Wasteland skill, especially for this one called Bring It Down. Bring It Down is a very powerful option when it comes to the wasteland skill what it does is it allows you to single out a target uh, as a as uh, with this skill and that means all your gang members of your ash waste nomads don't have to use target priority they could just focus on that target so if there's a fighter that you need killed or a vehicle that needs to be destroyed or whatever the case may be you can single out that target and your entire gang can open fire on it so that's the reason why they bring it down ability is a really good starting skill to use for this character as well. Now personally I feel that this one can be skipped at the beginning of a campaign. This guy does provide some useful buffs but they're buffs that you can kind of do it successfully without so you could of course recruit this fighter later if you want to plus not to mention the official model is from forge world which is a huge problem especially for people who don't have the funds to get it or you know you just don't want to pay that amount of money for it uh, my suggestion though if that's the case i would suggest just taking a dustback helamite uh, miniature and just convert it to make your own i mean it's not that difficult to do so so that'd be one of the recommendations i would recommend in case you don't want to take this guy uh, because of the price point uh, you could just you know convert your own all right, so now we're moving on to our Ash Waste Nomad Dust Riders. These are our prospects for our gang. These guys cost 80 credits a piece. They have five for movement, four plus and four plus for weapon skill and ballistic skill. They have uh, three strength and toughness, one wound, three plus for initiative, two attacks. They have nine leadership, seven cool, eight willpower, as well as nine intelligence. And when it comes to their skills, uh, they have basically cunning as their primary skill with ferocity as well as agility as their secondary skills on these guys as well. So when it comes to our Dust Riders, our Dust Riders are our prospect level fighters and they're automatically mounted on Dust Back Helamites. You can shoot and fight with them equally well. They both can do those things perfectly fine because of the four up for both of them. And they make more close combat oriented though because they can take advantage of the ride by rule, which means they also get strength bonuses when it comes to their close combat weapons when they charge forward using their dust by calamites. However, there is kind of a bad thing about the dust back helamites that I feel is kind of under, it's kind of wasted on these things. Um, the dust back helamite counts as a piece of war gear that makes them movement eight for the ash waste nomads. So instead of traveling five inches, they travel eight inches and they also get the mighty leap ability. But the dust back helamite itself, the insect mount that the rider actually uh, uses, has no attacks of its own. Which is actually kind of interesting because in the lore they say that Dustback Helamite is actually a predator and it uses its spines and its claws and its horns in order to kill its, its prey and eat them. Um, but you can't use any close combat attacks from the Dustback Helamite itself. So I think that's kind of like a missed opportunity. I do feel that the insect mounts should be able to do some kind of combat or uh, be able to spray venom or do something. Which I think would be kind of cool for these guys if they did that. But unfortunately uh, they don't do that for these guys. So that's one thing that's kind of sad about that. So on to your gangers now. These guys are Ash Waste Nomad Warriors. These are the ganger rank level fighters in your gang. They cost 60 credits a piece. 
So let's go talk about them real quick. So they have 6 inch movement, they have 4 plus weapon skill and ballista skill, 3 strength, 3 toughness, 1 wound, 3 plus for initiative, 1 attack. They have 7 leadership, 6 cool, 7 willpower, as well as 8 intelligence. And when it comes to their skills, especially if you decide to take a, a specialist in your gang, uh, their primary skills are agility as well as cunning with ferocity as well as shooting being their secondary skills as well. So these guys are actually your, just your ganger level fighters that you'd have for your gang. The nice thing about these guys is that they are actually equally good at shooting or coast combat because they have that four operating for both those things and oddly enough these guys are quite fast with six inch movement by themselves these guys can really close a distance if you want to make them close combat or you can make them moving really quickly so that way they can shoot as well which is kind of nice um, at the same time the specialists in this game can also take heavy weapons which is really cool and that's the charge caster which is like a missile launching shock based weapon which is actually really really cool for these guys another really cool thing about the uh, warriors is that they can also take long rifles as well even though long rifles are considered special weapons for most gangs uh, these guys can actually use them as basic weapons which is absolutely fantastic so you can do some really good long-range shooting with these guys and keep your opponents at a distance they could also close the distance very rapidly with using like normal blast rifles or whatever kind of close combat weapons you want to equip them with as well so that part is kind of neat now unfortunately just like their leaders and their champions um, these guys cannot be mounted on dust bed helamites, at least not officially, and there are no mount options for these guys. Uh, because Ashways Nomads can't take vehicles, there are no larger insects these guys can ride, which I really feels like a missed opportunity uh, at that point. However, though, I do feel that they will release future supplements in order to solve this problem, but if they don't, like I said before, I have a method I plan on using for my own gaming group to kind of fix this problem. And last, but certainly not at least, we have the Ash Waste Nomad Dust Runners, which are the Juvie level fighters for your gang. These guys cost 35 credits a piece. Uh, they once again have a movement of 6, 5 up for weapon skill, ballistic skill, 3 strength and toughness, 1 wound. They have 3 plus initiative, 1 attack. They have 9 leadership, 7 cool, 8 will power, as well as 9 intelligence. And these guys, they have the access to the following skills, which are cunning for their primary skills with agility, as well as ferocity as their secondary uh, skills as well. And so like, just like when it comes to any Juvie level fighter for any gang, these guys are mainly used as bullet magnets as well as human shields. You pair these guys up with your important fighters so that way they get killed first and not the important fighters in your gang. Uh, that's usually when it comes to the case with these guys. Uh, the nice thing about these characters though is that your dust runners can be equipped with blast rifles as well as blast carbines so they can actually do some long range shooting which is actually kind of cool, especially since they all have shock traits on their weapons and uh, the carbines have rapid fire, which is kind of nice too. However, my suggestion to you is to keep these guys cheap and keep them replaceable. So like, if you lose a dust runner, it's not the end of the world. You can get another one very quickly keep them bare bones um if they do happen to manage to survive and start accruing uh, experience then you can give them better weapons and equipment things like that later on uh, but for right off the bat though i suggest you keep them cheap for the most part because they're gonna die young and they're gonna die fast now just like their warrior counterparts as well as their champions leaders they cannot be right mounted on dustback helamites at least not officially they don't have access to vehicles or larger insects to ride upon so that is going to cause a problem for these guys to be outclassed by other gangs who have vehicle access so now that we're done talking about the individual fighters, let's talk about hanger-ons as well as brutes that this gang can take. Now when it comes to hanger-ons, they can't really take any hanger-ons except for the ones mentioned in the book of the Outlands. The only hanger-ons that Ash Race Nomad Gang can take are ammo jacks, sloppers, as well as rogue docks. Those are the only uh, hanger-ons you can actually take from the other, the same kind of things that other gangs can get access to as well from the from the gang books as well as from the rule book as well. So those are the only three types of hanger-ons they can they can take. However, you do have some unique brutes as well as hanger-ons that are unique only to your gang, and one of those guys is what's called the Nomad. Athromite Herder. This guy costs 40 credits and he is only available to Ash Waste Nomad gangs. And you can take up to two of these guys in a gang. So the stat for the Nomad Athromite Herder is a 5 movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus ballistic skill. They have 3 strength and 3 toughness, 1 wound, 4 plus for initiative, 1 attack, 7 leadership, 5 cool, 6 willpower, as well as 7 intelligence. Now the reason why you want to take these guys is because the brute that is available for this gang is known as the Athromite Dune Scuttler, which is basically a giant insect that attacks their opponents. And the reason why you want to take these guys is because they basically come with two skills. One's called the Athermite Whisperer, and one's called Training Program. And you can only take one or the other during the end phase. Now when it comes to the Athermite Whisperer, it says, during the post battle sequence, a Nomad Athermite Dune Scuttler is critically injured. It goes in recovery, otherwise roll a d6. On a three plus, the Athermite Dune Scuttler heals any lasting injuries it has and goes into recovery. This cannot be performed in the same post sequence as a training program ability. So if you do have a Dune Scuttler that gets injured, that's the reason why you want to take these guys, because they can help it heal up faster. 
Now the second ability is called Train Program, and the rule reads, during the post-battle sequence, a nomad Athermite Herder may attempt to train an Athermite Dune Scuttler, make an intelligence test for the nomad Athermite Herder. If successful, the Athermite Dune Scuttler gains D3 experience points. This cannot be performed in the same post sequence as the Athermite Whisper ability. So if you do take that brute, you want it to level up quickly, this is a definitely must take for when you're hanging around in your gang as well. Now it should be noted that this herder has a falling for Quimby's arm with a hunter's pole arm, mesh armor as well as an ash cloak, and he also has a born to the waist skill as well when it comes to that character. So that's the unique uh, hang around you have for your gang. Now the other brute that you have for your gang is known as the Othermite Dune Scuttler and you can actually take two of these in a gang as well. I imagine it's pretty much a giant insect or giant uh, spider of some sort. So let's go ahead and talk about it real quick. So it got movement 6, uh, 3 plus weapon skill, 5 plus ballistic skill, 5 strength and toughness, 3 wounds, 3 plus initiative, 4 attacks. It's got 7 leadership, 8 cool, 8 willpower, as well as 8 intelligence. And it's armed with mandibles, as well as heavy carapace armor as well. Now, they do have some special rules attached to it. One of it's called Wall, wall Scuttler. It says, when an Athermite Dune Scuttler climbs, the vertical distance they move is not halved. In other words, they always count as climbing up or down a ladder. So if you're going across, like three-dimensional battlefields and you know going up into things this is really gonna help you out especially if you use this in a dominion campaign like you're fighting in a zone mortalis or i'm sorry not a zone mortalis in a sector mechanicus type battlefield they also have another special rule called hard to kill it says athermite dune scuttlers are notoriously hard to kill we're rolling on the lasting injury table for an athermite dune scuttler roll twice and apply whatever result the controlling player wishes so that's another thing that's really cool about these guys as well. They also come with the fearsome as well as nerve of steel skills, and if they become, uh, they get access to skills as well. The primary skill for these guys are combat with agility as well as ferocity being secondary skills. So these guys can be quite deadly in an Ash Waste Nomad gang. I could definitely see you putting in credits and investing in these guys, especially in later parts of the campaign, uh, just because these guys will cause all kinds of problems for your enemies. Now, I'm not sure why we don't have large insects like this for the other characters to ride upon like i can imagine giant beetles or centipedes or something that the other wash waste nomads can ride upon to use as their vehicle mounts but for now though there isn't any options for that and we'll talk about that in a little more detail here in a little bit all right, so here's the obvious problem with taking um, an Ash Waste Nomad gang. They don't have vehicles, all right? So because of that, unlike your peers, um, if any other Wasteland gang wants to join in the Ash Waste campaign, they get a 1,000 credits to start their gang and additional 400 credits they spend on crew as well as vehicles. Unfortunately, as Ash Waste Nomad gang, you don't get access to that right now. So that is going to be a huge problem for you because you don't have vehicles that you could use and you don't have any mounts for that problem. So because of that, your only mount option the dust my uh, dust back helamite now like i said before i do feel that this is going to be fixed in the future with future supplements i'm sure they're going to give the ash waste nomads other mount options like bigger insects that you can mount weapons on and and stuff like that but for right now though the dust back helamite doesn't have anything and like i just mentioned earlier when we talked about the uh, dust rider they don't have any attacks themselves which is kind of strange because in the lore these dust my helamites are supposed to be really really deadly predators out in the ash waste but they don't they themselves have no attacks uh, whatsoever so that's kind of like a missed opportunity my feeling but like i said before i feel like they're going to fix this uh later on in the future supplements now when it comes to um your your rules when it comes to this and this is how we're going to fix some of the problems with this like i said before a lot of the members of a dust of a ash waste nomad gang cannot ride dust back helamites so there's here's the solution i would suggest so for example i have a friend of mine who actually wants to play an ash waste nomad gang but he's kind of sad that he can't put more additional mounts for his gang. So to solve this problem, what I decided to use was use the Wasteland Dirt Bike Rules from the uh, Book of the, Out uh, the Outlands. Basically, it costs 50 credits, and what it does is it makes your characters have movement 8, but they can't mount any weapons on it because it's just a dirt bike, right? They can only just fight from the back of this thing. And it's kind of a nice option to be able to mount your characters on vehicles. It may have them make them have the mounted condition. So to do this, my suggestion is to use exactly these same rules for your Ash Race Nomads. So because leaders and champions and warriors and uh, juvies cannot ride them normally, they pay 50 credits in order to ride that animal and use that for their mounts. At the same time, because they're running on the back of these Dust My Helmites, they lose their Sky Mantle ability as a, as a payoff for that one. So that kind of gives you a little more options. I see, think if, I feel that's kind of a fair option to take if you want to do that. But like I said, this is no way official in any way whatsoever. I suggest that if you want to do exactly the same thing, that you talk about your campaign arbitrator first, I'm sure your campaign arbitrator can see the benefits of doing that, but like I said, it's their campaign, so they say no, 
Uh, you're just going to have to live with it for right now. But for my campaigns, that's what I'm going to do for my friends. Uh, the cost of 50 credits to ride a dust back Helamite, and they lose their sky mantles when they do so. And so that will be my suggestion in order to fix that problem as well. So now that we're done talking about all the fighters, the strengths and weaknesses, as well as the problem with not having vehicle access for Ashways Nomads, let's go ahead and talk about our three different lists. We're going to give you guys three lists of starting 1,000 credit gangs that you guys could use for your first campaign. So uh, let's get that on a roll. All right, so the very first list is what I like to call the standard build. It's going to cost you a thousand credits to field this gang, so let's talk about it real quick. So first of all, you have an Ash Waste Nomad Chieftain. It's going to cost you 180 points. This character has an Ash Cloak, a Sky Mantle. You're also going to purchase Mesh Armor for this character, as well as a Long Rifle for Long Range Shooting and Blast Pistol for Close Combat and Close Quarters and Close Quarters uh, Shooting as well. And you'd give this guy the Overseer ability, and I'll talk about why that's going to be important here uh, later on. After that, you have an Ash Waste Nomad's Watcher. He's going to cost you 350 points. He's got an Ash Cloak, a Sky Mantle, Mesh Armor. This character is also carrying a Charge Caster mounted on a Suspenser. And that's the reason why this character costs so much money, because you're getting the Suspenser for this fighter as well. You're also going to equip this fighter with a Rocket Pack, which is going to help them to take care of ammo rolls for their Charging Caster. For the Charge Caster, You're also giving them a Blast Pistol as a backup weapon, and to give this fighter the Fast Shot ability, so that way they can fire this Charge Caster twice. You're going to pair this guy up with your Chieftain using that Overseer ability. I'll talk about that here in a second, a little more detail. After that, you're gonna get an Ash Waste Nomad Warrior. This character has 80 points. This guy's got a Sky Cloak as well as, sorry, Ash Cloak as well as a Sky Mantle. He's got a Blast Rifle for shooting as well as a Rock Pack in order to help with ammo rolls for the Watcher. And you're gonna do exactly the same thing with your second Warrior. Warrior number two is gonna be equipped exactly the same way. And then lastly, you're gonna have two Ash Waste Nomad Dust Riders that both cost you 155 points apiece. They're both equipped exactly the same way with Ash Cloaks, Dust Back Helamites, Mesh Armor for added survivability, Chain Lances for close combat, as well as Scavenge Stub Guns for close range shooting. Now, to get this list, you'll need to buy either the Ash Waste Starter Box Set or one back box of Ash Waste Nomads and one box of Dust, Bite, Dust Back Helamites. And that's the reason why I call it the standard build, because you're probably going to get these things. Now, this is a good beginner list, and it actually features most of what Ash Waste Nomads can do. Uh, you got two fire teams, one support fire team and one assault fire team. Your support fire team will consist of Chieftain, your Watcher, as well as your two Warriors, while your assault fire team will consist of your two Dust Riders. Now, for your support team, your Chieftain uses the Overseer ability in conjunction with your Watcher's Fast Shot ability to fire the Charge Caster up to four times each activation, which is going to be really, really nice. It's going to help you lay down that fire. It's going to put down a lot of suppression and blow up a lot of stuff at the same time. Meanwhile, Warriors 1 and 2 also fire their Blast Rivals to provide suppressing fire as well at the same time warriors one and two should be within three inches of the watcher so that if they do have to roll ammo rolls for the uh for the uh, charge caster the rocket packs will be able to help out with ammo checks on that one so that's what i would recommend for that Meanwhile, your Assault Fire team, which consists of Dust Rider number one and number two, are equipped with Chain Lances and Stub Guns, and so their job is to flank the enemy and to assault through, cutting their enemies down using the ride by ability with their Chain Lances to cut down their opponents. They could also do some shooting as well, and of course, as your gang earns more credits, my suggestion to you would be to hire more Dust, uh, dust Riders in order to make the Assault element for your gang. So this is one of the one I would call the standard build, and uh, this would be perfect for any starting player. Now the second list I call the Tusken Raider build, as in the Tusken Raiders from Star Wars, and the reason why that is the case is because the way these guys fight is pretty much the same way as the Tusken Raiders do from the from the Star Wars uh, uh, material. So let's talk about that real quick. So first of all, you're gonna have an Ash Waste Nomad Chief. It's gonna cost you 200 points. The no Chieftain's going to have Ash Cloak, Sky Mantle, Mesh Armor, a Blast Carbine for automatic close-up fire, as well as Telescopic Sight, so that way they get those bonuses for firing at longer ranges. You're going to have a Blast Pistol for close combat, as well as the Munitioneer skill, so that way they can assist their fellow fighters with ammo checks. After that, you're going to have two Ash Waste Nomad Watchers, Watchers number one and two. They're equipped exactly the same way. They're both going to cost you 150 points apiece. Both of them will have Ash Cloaks, both will have Sky Mantles, as well as Mesh Armor. They'll both also be equipped with Long Rifles, and they will also have Scavenge Stub Guns, for close range shooting and they both have fast shot so that way they can fire twice a piece with their long rifles at long ranges and the scavenge stub gun for close combat and uh, close quarter shooting after that you'll have three warriors and all three warriors will be equipped exactly the same way all three nomad warriors will be 130 credits a piece all three will be equipped with ash cloaks sky mantles mesh armor they'll also have blast carbines for automatic fire they'll also have telescopic sights on those blast carbines so that way they can extend the uh, close range to long range shots as well 
And they will also have scavenged step guns for close quarters combat to help them out as well. And then lastly, you have two Ash Waste Nomad Dust Runners. These guys will cost you 55 points apiece. They're both equipped exactly the same with Ash Cloak, Sky Mantles, Blast Rifles, as well as scavenged stub guns. And the Blast Rifle does some longer range shooting, and the scavenged stub gun will help them in close combat as well as close quarter shooting as well. Now, in order to purchase this, you either have one of two options. You either have the Ash Waste Starter Box set or one box of Ash Waste Nomads. And you have basically have three fire teams in this one. You have one assault fire team, followed by two sniper teams as well. Your assault fire team will consist of your chieftain as well as warriors one, two, and three. Your two sniper teams will consist of watcher one and dust runner number one, as well as sniper team number two of watcher number two and dust runner number two. Now these sniper teams provide overwatchers, means that these guys will be firing twice with their fast shots with their long rifles, and their dust runners may attempt to try to hit targets with their blast rifles. Well, the five blitz skill will be kind of hard for them, but they could definitely defend your champion from being shot at as they're doing the long range shooting. These guys are your snipers, and their job is to lay down long range suppressive fighters. Meanwhile, your assault team can also engage at a distance as well. And the reason why is because they can use their plus two short range bonuses on their blast carbines because they have telescopic sights, adding plus two to hit when you take an aiming action. And with rapid firing weapons that also have shock, that's super deadly at longer ranges. They'll be able to fire up the targets with 24 inches away, so they'll be able to do more like medium to short range shooting on this one. At the same time, you can also send them in forwards to do close in quarter shooting with close quarters combat, because they do have that rapid fire building on those blast carbines, and they can go through and wipe up whatever's left over. The nice thing about these guys too is that all the fighters also have pistols, so they can engage in close combat as well, and with the assault team closing with the enemy to destroy them, so this is really going to help you out as well. Imagine these guys using their hidden abilities well. They will use their hidden abilities from their sky mantles to hide so that way they can be safe and engage our enemies at distance and as they close up to them then they'll go in and finish them off. Just like if you ever watch Tusken Raiders from any of the Star Wars content movies or TV series or otherwise, these Tusken Raiders like to shoot from long ranges and then they only commit if they have to to close combat. But they mainly like to snipe you at a distance if they can. And finally, the very last list is what I call the Like a Bantha build. And the reason why is because all these guys will be mounted. Um, I know, like I said earlier, that a lot of guys like your Chieftains, your Watchers, as well as your Warriors can't ride Dustback Helmites, but I talked about my solution earlier to that, and that's exactly what I use for this one. So make sure you talk to your Arbitrator before you use this list, uh, because no way is it official, but... It sounds like a lot of fun. So it's cost you 997 credits. First of all, your Ash Waste Nomad Chieftain is going to cost you 255 credits. And the reason why is because they have Ash Cloak, the Loser Sky Mantle because of this. But they have Mesh Armor, a Blast Rifle, a Chain Lance. They're going to pay 50 credits to ride a Dustback Helamite. And they got the Commanding Presence ability for group activations. After that, you have your Ash Waste Nomad Watcher. He's going to cost you 197 credits. This guy will have Ash Cloak. They'll lose their Sky Mantle, but they'll have Mesh Armor as well as a Long Rifle. They'll also ride a Dustback Helamite and also have the Fast Shot ability as well. You're also going to include an Ash, Ash Waste uh, Nomad Stormcaller on this list as well, who's going to cost you 185 points. This person's going to have Ash Cloak as well as a Dustback Helamite. They also have Mesh Armor, a Blast Rifle, as well as a Stormcaller Staff for close combat. And they're going to take the Wasteland skill, bring it down. And then afterwards, you're going to have three Ash Waste Nomad Dust Riders. Uh, all three will cost you 120 points apiece. All three are equipped exactly the same with Ash Cloaks, Dustback Helamites, Scavenge Auto Guns, as well as Long Blades. Now, to make this group, you'll either you'll need to purchase two boxes of Dustback Helamites. You'll also need to buy a Stormcaller from Forge World or convert your own from the Dustback Helamite box set. And you're going to basically have three uh, Assault Fire Teams on this one. Assault Team Fire number one will have your Chieftain, your Warrior number one. Your Assault Fire Team number two will have a Watcher as well as Warrior number two. And your third Assault Fire Team will have your Stonecaller as well as Warrior number three. And like I said before, this is list is unofficial in the sense that the Chieftain and the Watchers use Dustback Helamites too. And like I said, to remember this, you charge them 50 credits to take the Wasteland Dirt Bike. But instead of a Dirt Bike, they're taking a Hel uh, Dustback Helamite instead, and they lose their Sky Mantle abilities as well. Now, if your Arbitrator is not cool with this, of course, then I would suggest you pass on this option. However, though, if your Arbitrator is cool with it, then by all means use it. And the tactics for these guys is pretty simple. Close the distance and attack like a Bantha. So that's my like a Bantha list that I recommend for the uh, Ash Waste Nomads. Alright, so in conclusion, the Ash Waste Nomads are a very interesting gang with very powerful weapons as well as stealth abilities on these guys. However, no vehicle access or having stronger weapons in their starting list I think is a little bit of a handicap for these guys. However though, I do feel that Games Workshop will fix this with future supplements in the future for these guys. At least I'm hoping so, but if not, 
use unofficial rules and buy powerful weapons from the trading post as well as a black market in order to help your gang out in this case like for example we talked about that dune scuttler for example i could see that easily being used as a mount option for like four or five of your nomads if you wanted to make those kind of unofficial rules in order to solve this problem i think that'd be actually a really cool way and actually to do that but that's just me and that's my and that's how i feel about it so that's good for this you guys as always please feel free to like comment and or subscribe your guys input is valuable to us as always also check us out on facebook instagram as well as blogger.com for all the latest greatest hobby news related to this channel that's good for this week guys we'll catch you guys in the next one peace out and stay classy